thank you everybody for coming to my theater session. My name is Asavri. I'm a program manager on the Azure Functions team. On Azure Functions, my job is to build support for more and more languages such as Java, Python, and PowerShell. Before I got extremely fascinated by serverless, I loved experimenting with and learning more about machine learning and artificial intelligence scenarios. Since serverless and machine learning are my key interests, I thought, why not do a talk on how we can make machine learning serverless today? So quick show of hands, how many of you are familiar with Azure Functions? All right, um, let's go ahead and skip this. For those of you who are not familiar, Azure Functions is a serverless FaaS offering that allows you to run custom code on demand in the cloud. Now, how many of you are familiar with machine learning? Again, a significant audience. Again, uh, for those of you not familiar, machine learning is the process of examining vast amounts of data and recognizing patterns to generate code that can find the same patterns in brand new data. Let's take a look at what the process of machine learning looks like. Machine learning always starts with a data set. Uh, in order to make a good prediction, you need to have a, a large data set. The bigger your data set is, the more accurate your model is bound to be. Any data set that you take for training is never ready uh, in, in its very raw format. You need to make sure the data does not contain conflicts, there are no vulnerabilities, no loopholes, no duplicates. You need to get rid of um, all, of this, um, all of the anomalies in your data by applying pre-processing modules. Once you get the data ready in a certain format to be consumed in your application, the next step is to find a good statistical algorithm to train your model. Typically, a data scientist would experiment with different combinations of a prepared data set and a statistical algorithm to train a model. And when you go ahead and apply that algorithm to prepared data set, what we get is a, uh, is a model. A model is nothing but a piece of code that is uh, capable of recognizing patterns in data that it's never seen before. And finally, when we've got a model ready, we can go ahead and deploy it as an inferencing application to make a prediction. So that's the process of machine learning, and we typically like to divide it into three major buckets, data processing, model training, and model deployment. While data processing and model training are typically the job of a data scientist, model deployment or inferencing is done by an application developer. Before an application developer can go ahead and make a prediction on input, they too need to process the data to make sure it's in a format that can be consumed by the model. Today, we'll be focusing on how we can make the life of an application developer easier by um, having them write the data processing and the inferencing application using serverless Azure functions. Let's take a look at each of these individual components, uh, starting with data processing. Data processing, as, as we said, in order to make a prediction on an input, we need to make sure that the input is in a format that's consumable by the model or consumable by the prediction logic. Azure Functions enables you um, to speak with different data sources by using the capabilities of triggers and bindings. A trigger in Azure Function is anything, uh, any event that takes place in a source system that's capable of invoking a function execution. And then a binding uh, in functions is any data source that a, a function can speak with without having to go into the underlying details of the API or the SDK of that data source. Azure Functions makes it easier to use the capabilities of triggers and bindings to be able to apply deep uh, data preprocessing modules, uh, modules to your uh, raw input without having to go into the details of where this data is coming from, what the authentication mechanism looks like, what the SDK is, and whatnot. The second part of um, um, a model deployment that we spoke of for an application developer is writing the inferencing logic and deploying the model in conjunction with that logic. Typically, um, 
it is recommended that the language or runtime that you use to train your model is the same that you use to write the inferencing logic as well. For instance, a very popular example is Python and R are the typical languages you would use to train a model. And you'd likely want to use the same TensorFlow or Pandas library to make a prediction as well. The good news today is that uh, at Ignite, we announced that Azure Functions now supports Python. So you can write your, uh, write your functions using Python 3.6 on the Functions v2 runtime that just became generally available this Monday. You can also publish your functions to a serverless hosting model on Linux and Azure. Additionally, you can develop, test, debug, and publish your functions right from within Visual Studio Code using the Azure Functions extension or using the familiar command line tooling that we call Azure Functions Core Tools. The functionality today is in private preview. You can sign up for the aka.ms link on the screen um, and give the early bits a try to give us feedback. And finally, once we've, uh, we're done with the, um, writing our inferencing logic, the next step is, hey, how do we combine my inferencing logic or my prediction logic with my trained model and deploy it as an Azure function? The good thing is, with Azure Functions, you can pick from a variety of hosting or deployment models. You can pick to deploy your function as a serverless application, either on a, win a Windows-based hosting platform or a Linux-based hosting platform. Or you can simply containerize the runtime and your function app to host um, on a container hosting service such as AKS or even an IoT device. And finally, if your data is located on-prem, it is likely that your prediction or inferencing logic also, to be, also needs to be located on-prem. Since Azure Functions is available on Azure Stack, you can, run the same, uh, app, uh, you can run the same function that you would run in the cloud on Azure Stack as well. And that's it. That's how easy it is to uh, build an Azure function that can be used to deploy your model and inferencing logic in the same place and can run serverlessly in the cloud. With that, let's take a look at a demo of image classification using Azure Functions. So I've got a scenario here. Um, my nephew is a big fan of uh, Marvel and DC. I, however, uh, cannot differentiate between the two characters, which makes shopping really difficult because uh, I need to pick Marvel uh, and not DC, which he likes less than Marvel. So I need to build um, an Azure function today that can take um, an image URL of one of the characters and tell me whether it's a Marvel character or a DC character. Let's see how I built this. Um, application. The very first part, as we mentioned, is to train a model, a piece of code that understands whether uh, the character we're going to give it is a DC character or a Marvel character. Uh, for, the, uh, for the purpose of classification, I use custom vision, which is a, a, a image classification cognitive services um, offering that you can use to upload plenty of um, sample images and give them the tag of uh, the classification that you needed to determine. Using um, custom vision, I went ahead and trained a model. In this case, it's already uh, trained. And I can go ahead and export the model in one of the following formats. Because I'll be using Python to write my inferencing application, I went ahead and downloaded the TensorFlow format for my model. Um, I already have this plugged into my Azure function. So let's take a look at uh, what my function looks like. So the very first concept you need to understand in Azure Functions is uh, the concept of a functions project. Here um, in Visual Studio Code, uh, I have a Python functions project, uh, which can encapsulate multiple functions and their local and hosting configuration alike. In my function uh, app right here, I've got the requirements.txt file that I can use to specify any dependencies that might be needed for my functions uh, to run locally and in Azure. And then finally, once I have my dependencies specified, I can go in and write my actual function logic. Within my function, there are two important files that I need to understand here. The very first one is the function JSON configuration. For every function that you write in Azure Functions, uh, this configuration defines what bindings or data sources your function needs to speak to. So in this case, I have an HTTP trigger that will invoke my function. And 
the return type of my function would be an HTTP response type. Once I've got this going, I can go ahead and look at the actual function logic. I've got the, the other script that I've got here is my inferencing script. My inferencing script consumes an HTTP request. This is the same thing that we defined in our function JSON right here. It'll go ahead and consume the request and uh, look for the image URL in the query parameter string. Once it grabs the URL, it'll go ahead and pass the URL to a separate Python module I have right here, which will then go ahead and initialize my model, go ahead and um, format the input in, uh, format the image input in the, um, in the format that I want it to be consumed by my model, and then finally go ahead and run the prediction right here. All right. Once I've got the results, I can go ahead and log the output to my console and also return it as part of my HTTP response. Given that the function's runtime is open source, I can actually go ahead and run this exact function that you're seeing locally uh, via VS Code. So let's go ahead and start the function's runtime. All right, so the function's runtime uh, stood up a localhost endpoint for me here to invoke, my, um, to invoke my prediction function. I can go ahead and call this right here. I'm seeing a 500 because my function expects um, the URL of an image. So let's go ahead and I've already got an image right here. I'll copy the URL and pass it as part of the query parameter. And that's it. Um, it shows me that Batman's a DC character, which is appropriate. I can also go ahead and try to do um, some fancier things, maybe try to predict what character am I myself. And my model thinks uh, with almost 100% accuracy that I'm a DC character uh, and not Marvel. All right, so that was the demo. Um, you saw how easy it was for me to simply write a Python script for the inferencing logic and add the, dependence, uh, add the model that I trained earlier as a dependency to my Azure function. I did not have to worry about um, what, um, sorry, uh, I can directly go ahead and publish this to Azure as it is and not have to worry about what infrastructure this would live on, how I'll manage the server, what dependencies need to be installed at all. The entire serverless infrastructure would do this for me out of the box. Thank you.